August 10th meeting of Advisory Park Board to order. Roll call. Davis? Here. Kierens? Here. Kobleski? Here. Herman? Here. Michelson? Here. Miller? Here. Rule? Schusler? Here. Buller? Here. Approval of the July 13th meeting. Are there any additions, corrections, anything like that? Not all entertain a motion. I'll motion second. to accept. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> okay, I don't think we have any citizen statements. Uh, we got one thing on the agenda tonight. Discuss and approve restroom building design for South Park. Great. Um, as you recall, at the uh, here's the June meeting, we did inform you that uh, we're going to start working with HGM Architecture on the design of the restroom facility for our South Park. If you recall, in our CIP for 2015, um, we had $235,000 budgeted. Um, minus some fees for architecture and we're looking at um, doing the demolition in house but we'll have some, have some landfill fees. We're looking at about a $220,000 budget for the construction of the, of the facility. Um, if you recall also we had some discussion about um, possibly having a shelter added onto the end of the building. Um, as we started designing the facility with Mr. Hanshi and his staff, um, we did at least start out having a shelter on. And when uh, Ron put together the proposed budget for the project, it came in at about $270,000, $275,000. Um, so I informed Ron that we don't have that much in the budget, obviously. Um, but what we'd like to do, um, as you'll see as we get into the design, um, we've had some discussions. What we'd like to do is bid it out as a um, the base, just the restroom facility as we're proposing, um, but we can also include an alternate to have the shelter so we know where the numbers come in. Um, there's been some discussion maybe if we could take on a, uh, a fairly quick fundraiser to get some additional funds raised to have the shelter incorporated as part of this project. That's something we'll be looking at doing. Um, but if nothing else, it's something where Ron will design the existing or the new restroom facility that we can eventually add a shelter onto the end. So we'll have the cost estimate for um, doing that in the future if we need that so we're looking at a couple different opportunities but at this point at this point what we're looking to do is just get the um, restroom shelter approved um, from this board from here it would go to the Common Council or I'm sorry to the Plan Commission uh, the Plan Commission needs to approve all public buildings that go into uh, public areas once that takes place um, we'd look at getting the bid specs put together getting it bid out um, hopefully beginning construction later this fall into the winter early spring um, with an anticipated opening of late spring of early or early next summer obviously weather dependent um, working through the winter months but that's our goal um, with that we would have limited interruptions on the major special events down there because um, we're not looking to demolish the facility until most likely mid-september of this year so um, with that what I wanted to do is just start out with some of the the information that we provided in your packet hopefully you received um, the uh, the pillars that are currently existing throughout South Park at some of the entries with the lights on um, we really felt that incorporating that type of stone and maybe that type of facade into the building um, would be nice it would um, it's something that we plan to do is to try to keep these pillars these lit pillars up um, so what Ron is doing is incorporating that that type of stone into the bid specs so even though on the the colored renderings it may not look like that stone that's why we wanted to provide the picture to you so that's what would be intended um, if you take a look at the colored renderings this would be um, if you take a look not the end with the the restroom doors but the end uh, that just has the um, essentially the open face would be facing to the north um, what we would try to do is incorporate this building as close to possible on the existing site. We would be shifting it a little bit to the south so there's some tree removal. Um, we'd want to get those trees out of there anyways because we don't want the trees overhanging this new facility because we want to protect the roof. Um, but that would also, by shifting it a little bit to the south, will give us room to either incorporate the shelter at this time or in the future to incorporate a shelter on the north end. The reason we'd want to put it on the north end is there's parking um, in the, the roadway or the um, the circle road that comes through South Park. So there'd be some parking closer to the to the north end. If you take a look at this rendering, you can see the restrooms are intended that you would enter the restrooms from the south side. Um, and then there is also a, what we're calling a family changing area. 
it's not shown on here but the family changing area would be on the east side facing the existing playground and splash pad um, we thought we'd want to incorporate that for not only users of the um, splash pad for maybe a changing area for wetsuits but also with the new inclusive playground down there so it's more um, ADA compliant for um, families that do have somebody to care for with special needs so that gives you a little bit of background on the facade and um, what we're looking to do the floor plan if you'd like to take a look at that it's pretty straightforward um, Ron has worked with our um, uh, the building inspector and uh, the plumbing inspector here to come up with the number of um, toilet facilities and urinals and wash stations that we would uh, want to incorporate here what they did was took a look at um, what we have for existing facilities down there for restrooms we really have nothing other than this facility and the number of um, patrons we're trying to uh, accommodate whether it's the park rentals the shelters the playgrounds and if you have any questions specifically about that I asked Ron to be here to address some of those questions if they came up um, so it may look like it's a lot of um, stations or uh, restroom facilities but when you take a look at some of the large events that go on we we think it's something that needs to uh, take place at this time the other document um, is again just the uh, the elevations uh, if you take it again the, the north elevation is essentially the the bare wall that if we did add a shelter onto the end it would be off of that north elevation the east elevation is again the area or the uh, the side that would be facing the playground the one door showing the entrance to the the family changing area south elevation again shows you the the entry to the the restroom facilities with the um, drinking fountain in between and then the west elevation facing Georgia Street has essentially a doorway into the chase area or a little storage area for some equipment that we may keep there when we have to gain access into the uh, the areas for improvements or maintenance so what we're looking at tonight is get some input if you'd like to see some changes to the building um, again it's what we're trying to do is, is mimic kind of what's out there for stonework Ron also looked at the roof on shelter number one because the um, capital our master plan for South Park um, calls for that facility to remain but be renovated so he tried to do a little bit of matching on the roof lines that are out there so it's a little different design than what we've had at some of our other restrooms but a lot of the same type of materials so with that I'll, I'll open it for any questions or if there's anything that I can't address if Ron um, needs to, to help us out that's fine as well Bill uh, Ray where's this building going comparison to the one that's existing here now is it going to the south of it it would be um, we'd locate it a little bit further to the south to give us some room on the north end to put the shelter facility on um, so we're going a little bit closer to shelter two which was the the smaller enclosed shelter so yes it'd be sliding a little bit to the south from the existing location which I think is good because it'll um, in the meantime until shelter two um, does get torn down because there will be future parking in that location but it also gets it closer to shelter one so people using those facilities won't have to walk as far to get to the the restrooms either so I got a question for Ron I don't know if he's you want to come up to the mic Ron Ron you want to come up to the microphone please yeah. <clears throat> Ron the existing one if I remember right was was two urinals in a in a, in a toilet stall is that accurate on, on on the men's side and then I think there were two toilet stalls on, no, on pre the presently there are two water closets on the men's side and four urinals okay right. and on the women's side there are six water closets okay okay all right now we did review this with plumbing as Ray had mentioned presently the building that you have there now is set up for approximately 650 res uh, people in the park at any one time okay yeah and uh, I asked him you know <coughs> can we reduce it if the park board would like it he said in their opinion no that they would like to see it as the size that it is because you have the capacity of about 650 to 675 people in the park at any one time how, how how's the construction climate out there I mean is there any is there any chance that this is going to come in below your estimates what um, we did and I reviewed this with Ray uh, the last one that we bid which was Stevens Park uh, which looks great by the oh, way oh thank you yeah. uh, the uh, the bids we had a, a basically a, a range of 20 percent from high to low and uh, anticipating that this budget is set up basically on the mid-range so uh, if 
the conditions are still the same and the materials are basically the same, the prevailing uh, it's going to be right about at our estimate. Okay. Yeah. Right. Feeling right thing. It really looks nice. Nice job. Yeah, yeah Stevens Park yeah. is coming off well. Yeah. Thank you. And they're just for your information, they're in the middle of Twenty uh, Fourth Street right now. So okay. Should be done in the next six to eight weeks. Anybody else? I'd just like to go on record as saying I'd really like to see that shelter attached to it. I know money's an issue. I get it, but. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can raise some funds, I think it's well worth it. Yeah, I think what we can do is continue to have some discussions about doing that. And um, like I said, we have a, essentially a budget that Ron put together based on some current projects. And so we have a general dollar idea. If we can come up with that money as we go out to bids, if we have the dollars when the, the award is ready, we can definitely award the whole project, hopefully. Uh, I don't know if this is relevant or not, but how does this prevailing rate thing they're talking about enter into the bidding process on this well it's a public works broad project so by state statutes we do have to pay prevailing wages on I, I thought there was something it didn't get in, in front it didn't of the legis or it didn't yeah. get passed no. they were looking at increasing the, the threshold and um, it's still I think is a $25,000 project you need to pay um, the prevailing wage I believe they were looking to increase at a certain dollar amount but that was not passed okay just one question. I don't see, and maybe I'm missing it, is there any kind of supply closets in here to keep inventory and stuff? Yep, that's actually part of the um, the chase area where you go in. Oh, okay. There's about a six by eight room in the back there. Okay, that. Steve, <clears throat> yep. Yeah, behind the uh, family changing room. Okay. Yeah, so that's big enough for supplies and that type of thing. Yeah, and typically, Steve, what we've got in our, our maintenance trucks now is we've got them set up with a lot of the cleaning supplies right on there, but this will allow us to keep things there if, if necessary. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Any comments or any thoughts on the, the materials or the look of it? Oh, just so when we get to the plan commission, just looks so we're nice. all... Okay. Oh, Chad, what do you think for as far as the maintenance of it? I say, you know, take care of the spray painting vandalism and that. Is that siding in that? Is that something that you can clean up after it's painted or knock on wood the like the <clears throat> composite siding that we have we've we haven't been tagged yet in the new facilities on that uh, rock structures we've had a little bit with but uh, I think we got a component that will work well without etching it too much right now so um, interior wise just like we've worked with in the past a lot of the coatings have been very well to deal with especially the floor coatings that have worked out extremely well in cleaning wise uh, given a good appearance and uh, working well with us and all the fixtures that have been out there have been working out very well, uh, also efficient uh, from that end. So it's been a, a good progression, I guess, through the steps we've gone through so far. You want to touch on the electric strikes too right away? Oh. Okay. Um, all the restrooms that we have that on the refurbishment projects for have had electronic strikes put in them. So they're set for hours for operation. Um, that's reduced a lot on our vandalism at a couple of sites so far. I hope it stays like that. Um, so as we progress again, those will keep getting there put in there and it's been working out well so far make a motion to approve the design a second second oh. Davis hi Aarons hi Kovaleski hi Herman hi Michelson hi Miller hi Schusler hi Wooler hi okay director's report all right. Um, I wanted to give you an update on the latest copy of the, um, the capital improvement plan for 2016 that we just received within the last couple of weeks. Um, I know that city manager Roloff and our finance director have been um, working hard to try to get projects in for each department um, based on the council giving staff and the council adopting um, um, a borrowing policy though, over the last couple of years where we're really taking a look at at least for the next 10 years limiting the city borrowing um, so our, the number of projects that are, are currently included for our department have been scaled back considerably that um, the parks board had recommended back on um, in their June meeting so I just want to give you an update on what currently is in the document and if there's certain things that um, this board or certain members want to make a push for um, once the council gets into CIP meetings um, you're more than welcome to attend as a citizen or as a board member um, I'd like to, to see board members show up if you can to those meetings and say we'd really like to have a certain project done but give you an idea um, I, I brought along the prioritized list from the parks board 
the top project was the Menominee Park Little Oshkosh update. Um, that is currently still in the plan, and that is, um, we're figuring about a four, $400,000 project with the city contribu contribution being about 100000 and then a fundraising effort to go after the additional 300000 uh, the next project that uh, has stayed in the, the project so far in the plan so far is the Red Arrow Park restrooms update. Um, the other item is design services for the South Park Lagoons and then Tech Miller lighting update. Um, so we, um, we have four projects that are currently included. Um, just to give you an idea, the uh, design for services for South Park Lagoons was our second priority that was included along with the Little Oshkosh. Um, Rainbow Park Design Services for the launch improvements um, was taken out. Menominee Park Tennis Courts uh, was the fourth project. That one was removed as well. And then our fifth project was the Red Arrow Restrooms, and then all the other projects kind of fell in the line. So I don't know if, if anybody wants to see a copy of the prioritized list from that you had back in June. We could have Trish email that out just so you have an idea. Um, but I wanted to let you know what's currently in there. Um, again, I, it's, um, it's hard when all the departments are putting in a, a number of requests, and I... Um, I can say that we've um, seen larger projects and larger dollars in the past, but again, it's um, it's tough budget times at this point, and the, the council has really given us and, and their own direction to uh, to limit the borrowing. So, just give you an idea on, on what's currently out there. Um, wanted to give you an update too on, if you recall, back in every year it was a couple of years back, we had entered into agreement with UW Oshkosh Alumni Welcome Center when they were building the, the new Alumni Center and Carl Steiger Park. There were some things that this board approved and then the Common Council approved. There were some improvements that um, the foundation, UW Oshkosh Foundation, was responsible for in Carl Steiger Park. Um, just to give you a rundown, they have taken over maintenance of that park, so they've been doing the mowing, snow removal, and so forth. A couple of projects that um, were specifically talked about in here. Um, the foundation shall refurbish, repaint, and re-roof the gazebo within Carl Steiger Park on or before December 1st of 2014. That has not been done yet. Um, we just, Chad and I met with um, university staff actually last week, met them on site at the shelter, went over um, what the options are to redo that roof, and they are planning to begin that project right after school starts. They've got a couple projects they need to get done in-house, um, but they will begin this, um, our feeling is probably by early to mid-September. Um, even though they're late on it, we did. Um, they've had some staffing turnovers in their maintenance department, and due to some other um, unforeseen circumstances, um, but they are aware of their commitments during uh, or in this agreement. So again, you should see that um, take place this fall yet. Um, the other item, and this is by two, December 1st of 2016, uh, there was included a new um, parking lot to be constructed within the Os Osceola Street um, vacated right away. Um, we again at our meeting with the university staff last week we did highlight that and made them aware that they um, need to be planning for that um, new parking area to be constructed and then the other item is reconstruction of the trail or the pathway through Carl Steiger Park and that needs to be completed on or before December 1st of 2016 as well and we have been in discussions with them on this project um, as part of our project at William Steiger Park um, if we were going to have a contractor in doing the essentially the south side of the river, um, they had uh, hoped that they could utilize that contractor on the north side of the river. Um, but they are aware that they need to um, complete that by December 1st of 2016. So Is those 2016 were 2016 or 2015? 2016. On the trail? Mm hmm. Yep. Um, so. Like I said, the one that, that they have fallen a little behind on is the, the gazebo. Um, we do, um, a member of our staff, planning staff, um, transit, engineering, and finance, we do have quarterly meetings with the university staff with a, a list of projects that might be going on in the city or university, and they keep a running um, agenda on these projects as well. So we'll stay on top of those as well. Ray, did um, they give us a date on the parking? Is parking an issue down there? I, I thought that was going to be a immediate thing. We, we gave them the entire parking lot, didn't we? We did, and as part of their um, lot six, which is adjacent to Alumni Center, okay. they have specific parking for Carl Steiger Park. Okay. There is actual signage up. Okay. In addition, they had to provide two spots for the bridge tenders, which they did and signed. Okay. Um, I think initially we received, received a couple comments that it would have been nice to keep the parking a little closer, but I would say after the first couple of months, we haven't received any comments okay. or concerns. Um, 
So no, they're they're okay with that because they did provide parking in that lot. Just curious. Yep. Um, as far as the rest of my report, it's um, budget time for us. Our budget department budgets are due to um, city finance on Friday of this week, so we are um, busy meeting and working on those. At the same time, we also had of our um, staff performance evaluations that are also due, so we're um, evaluating all of our staff members. And then just a reminder that our Tuesday night concert series, the last free concert, um, is tomorrow evening, and it's Nashville Pipeline, um, a really good country band. So um, we've been having some really great attendance, and we'd like to see the, the last night be the, the best one yet. So if you're not doing anything, come on down for some, some free music. That's it. Okay. Chad. Just to highlight a couple of the projects going on, as Ron mentioned before, the 24th Street Boat Launch restroom uh, reconstruction is in progress right now. Uh, and moving along, Stevens Park uh, is going uh, near completion right now. We're actually trying to schedule to get the um, security company back in there for finishing off the electronic strikes and all that uh, right now. And the restoration is going well on there. I keep it, hope it keeps raining the way it is in these nice, timely little showers so we don't have to water as much. Um, Tech Miller Park is coming along well as with the restoration, the seed growth going up there after all the sidewalk improvements. Um, so that's uh, helping out. And uh, of course, West Algoma is doing really well too with the perimeter walks through there. A um, couple of projects we're working on right now is Memorial Bench installation along Miller's Bay. Uh, there's a couple more locations we'll be pulling out of some of the older benches in that area. Um, uh, we got a small project at the Abe Roshlin. Uh, um, uh, smokestack we'll be putting in a little access path up to the uh, donor board with some new landscaping around that area um, uh, uh, trying to think what else we got going here um, facilities wise the leech we just finished we're getting towards the near of our end of our season with the water fest events um, uh, Jenny put together a great event with the touch a truck last weekend with well attendance and I'm sure she'll have a good report at the next meeting for that um, uh, Two bridges at the river wall on the other side of the river. On the oh, for the Cross boat works property. Yep. Um, those those are in. It. I know it's not really open yet for uh, it, people who are going up there and stuff. At, yeah. So far, no, there's no. Um, I know we got a couple benches and stuff to put up there yet, and there's some signs that are going to be in place. Uh, we got in our shop to work on that area too. So. Um, Kind of dwindling down a little bit on some projects, but a lot of maintenance stuff we've been able to catch up on. I think I had a good crew of people down there working with Menominee Park on tree trimming alone, uh, which did help out a lot of the facilities and give us a little better access for mowing and uh, trimming in some different areas too. So with the grass being a little dormant, it's helped us out immensely to get caught up in a couple other areas. So I don't mind that's dry a little bit. I know it doesn't help the golf course or anybody else, but uh, it does help us a little bit. But. Um, um, so a lot to lot to move on in the fall, but if there's any questions, I'll take anything. So I have just one question: the, the boat works is really nice. I mean, the view off off those bridges is just excellent. It's it's really well done and really nice. Um, I was going through there today. I just have: is there more cement? Any more cement work? Or I see have, the crews are all gone. Everybody's gone. The the question I've got: Will there be any access from Michigan Avenue to that to any of that any concrete work where you could, because right now, it, you know, it's all done. Everybody's gone. But um, when you when you're on Michigan Michigan Avenue, Michigan Street, you're parking there. Will there be a way, like for handicapped people or bikes or anything, to access that? Is I, I know it's early, so there might still be work that's going to be. The parking lot project starts place in late September. Is should be right? starting. Okay. Okay. So, so, so there's a secondary yeah. part of the project. Okay. Yep. There's a parking lot that'll go. Um, to the south of the existing restroom okay. facility now yep. and then i believe there's a sidewalk that will go out to um to michigan or along michigan um so there yeah because we do have an um the 80 88 canoe and kayak yep. launched oh, on that's there right. yeah so we had to make sure that everything was 88 compliant but what the, what is there now really looks nice i mean it looks like they really have done a nice job on that anything, anything else terry i got three things that the board might be interested in. it's on our agenda for tomorrow night um, you remember back uh, a couple meetings ago, we, um, there was a pocket park or a park being put in the Bristol Square subdivision out on Jackson oh. Street. That's coming up for uh, a zoning change, uh, ordinance change, because they um, are making a few different designations. So the zoning has to be changed out there from R1 single family to R3 multiple. So they're putting in some apartments and twin dominiums along with single family housing and that park is part of that and then also you, you talk to riverwalk um 
we have got got the bids to approve um, the section by um, well, it would be the restaurant over there. Backside. Backside. Um, that's going to go to Michael's Materials is the approval bid for a million one sixty four just for that little section up to Oregon. Then the third thing is there there was a request through the planning department to put a, one of those flashing beacons yes. on the river walk off of the Oregon Street section. That's coming up also to council for approval. Designates signalized pedestrian crossing Oregon Street for the r river walk. So, and I know Ray, I think they're working with Jill the one again. We already have the easements. It's just a matter of putting together proposal and things for that section too. So that's all gonna tie in hopefully by sometime next year. Or at least bid it out and probably be a three year project because I think there's a lot of um, remediation and stuff that's gonna have to be done in that section of the old Joe one property. But those three things are on the council's agenda for approval tomorrow night. I don't see any of them not moving forward. So I'll let you know as those things hit our agenda because a lot of times they come to you first yeah. <laughs> and they go through another commission and then they finally get the council. So you know you wonder sometimes where that stuff goes. And just I'll just throw this out because we did have a meeting and and Jim was there and I was at the Menominee Park Neighborhood Association meeting. Some of the citizens are not happy with the the um, rest uh, the work that the group has done on the wildflowers and things. They feel that. Um, we need to get it back down to that two to three feet that was approved. Um, I heard from three citizens besides Jim. Yeah, I heard right? I heard two people talk to me about it. That and night. so I don't know what authority we have. If there's any way of you know giving them a timeline to get it down to that, and if they don't, your staff goes in there and takes care of it. We can go to that extreme, or council gives you that approval. But I received a call from the mayor who said, he, "Yeah, that was a." hot topic for him while he was yep. there so he was there after I was there yep. and so um, we heard from quite a few citizens so I don't know if you want to put that back on the board's agenda down the line I mean we're getting to the end of the growing season so it'll go dormant and that, but for next spring I, I think maybe I, I, a suggestion maybe we can maybe you can or Chad can work with Bill and and maybe pick out what what plants they they can and can't put in there with with the height restrictions um yeah I'll let them, these guys should i think uh, well i think bill can bill come up should. with a list right but i'm saying give them give bill the direction yeah. to, to pick out the plants that are going to max out at that three foot level and uh yeah i'll uh, we'll pass it along to bill and and have a meet with the the group but i think we heard from you know the the landing conservation staff that to get it down to that height is essentially starting over and okay. so that let us check in a little bit further okay. yeah, we did right. to get a call right. from the mayor a as well absolutely so, yep. so. okay it's good to know all right anything else thanks for showing up thank you ron motion to adjourn second, second. all in favor say aye all right, all right. All right.